and welcome to my kitchen. And today we're going to be making bread. But today we're going to be making a whole wheat perfect sandwich loaf. I've had so many people ask me, do you have a recipe for a whole wheat sandwich loaf? Because I've done the perfect sandwich loaf that is my go-to bread. And um, my family doesn't really prefer whole wheat per se. And we don't eat a terrible amount of, I mean, we use bread for sandwiches. That's pretty much it during the week. But mostly, we don't really eat a ton of bread. Um, I usually make a, a recipe and freeze one loaf out of the recipe. And then um, it takes us a while to use a whole loaf of bread. But in any case, I thought I would go ahead and share with you a recipe that I've developed. I've been working on this for about a month now, and I think that you're going to like it. It is a light wheat and honey sandwich loaf. And I say light wheat because we're using some all-purpose flour and we're using some white wheat flour. And I have some reasons for that. I have tried this recipe with 100% whole wheat. I have tried this recipe with 50% whole wheat and 50% all-purpose. And I have tried this recipe, as I'm showing it to you today, with half white wheat and half all-purpose. And the reason for that is this is the very best one. I've also tried this recipe using molasses in place of honey. And um, I've done this about seven times. And this is the one that always comes out on top. So this is the one I'm sharing with you. And what we do to get started is I have two cups of warm water, goes right in the bowl. Into that goes one tablespoon of instant yeast. If you're using yeast from a packet that is not instant, you'll have to proof that first. And that just means to let it sit there and not bubble. We're going to add a half a cup of honey. And when I poured this, I poured the oil in this cup first. And then I poured the oil in another cup. And I poured the honey back into this cup that was already oiled. So that my honey will just all drip completely out of this cup. And I don't have to scrape it. It takes a little patience, but it's all coming out. I will. It's almost done. That's all that's left. Mm -hmm. See? It comes out completely. Mm -hmm. Alright. There's the honey and the, um, the yeast and the water. We're going to put in a half a cup of vegetable oil. And don't worry about writing the recipe down because I'll have it posted on my website at noreenskitchen.com. And now, so that's oil, yeast, honey, and um, water. It smells amazing already. It does, doesn't it? Now we're going to go in with the flour. There's three cups of uh, all-purpose flour and three cups of white wheat flour. This is a soft wheat flour and uh, this is a King Arthur white wheat. It's exceptional. I've been using this one for years. Here's a quarter of a cup of dry milk powder. And no, you can't substitute uh, regular milk for dry milk powder. The reason we've used dry milk powder in these recipes is to amend the dough and give it um, a certain texture and, uh, and loft. There's a quarter of a cup of uh, potato flakes, instant potato flakes. Two tablespoons of vital wheat gluten. This will help the bread to be soft and squishy um, like we like our sandwich bread and a tablespoon of salt, salt of your choice. I'm using Himalayan pink salt. Now, additionally, I like to add a half a cup of flaxseed meal. This really boosts the nutritional value of the bread. And today I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup, cup of uh, chopped hemp hearts because, you know, I can. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really good for you. So, all that being said, dump everything in the bowl. Put your dough hook on and let it knead, mix together, and, um, and then you let it knead for five minutes. Okay, the dough has just come together and it's not sticking to the bowl in, at any point. So this is the time when you're going to turn your timer on and let it knead for five minutes. You don't start the timer until the, the dough has become cohesive. This is also the time you're going to want to 
feel your dough. My dough is ever so slightly sticky, but the flour hasn't had a chance to absorb all the moisture yet, so don't do anything at this point. If you see that your dough is sticking a little bit to the bottom of the bowl, or it's got like a blob that's really kind of elastic down there, throw in a little bit of flour, like a tablespoon at a time until you reach this point. The dough should not stick to your fingers when you squeeze it, okay? A lot of things determine how much flour is gonna go in or how much water is going to go into your dough. You're always going to start with your base recipe. If it's dry in your area, you may have to add a little more moisture. If it's wet, like if it's been snowing or raining or it's really humid, you may have to add a skosh more flour. So it's, it's, it's a fluid thing, you know. Baking bread is just kind of a, a knowing thing. It's a variable. It, there really are uh, quite a few variables. So it's just a matter of taking your time, and the more practice you get, the better you get at it. So I'm going to go ahead and complete kneading my dough for five minutes. Okay, we're done kneading. And we'll just take this off here and let you see. Move that out of the way a little bit. It's, slightly so, a little sticky. it's just a little bit tacky, and that's exactly how you want it tacky in a good way, not like, oh my god, her outfit is so tacky. Okay. Just pull this dough hook out of here. Now, for those of you who have artisan mixers with this, with one of those J or C hooks, you may actually consider doing this by hand because I don't know that your mixer is going to handle this dough. This is a two loaf recipe. And, <coughs> pardon me. It's kind of um, it's kind of heavy for the uh, artisan stand mixer. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray my bowl with a little veggie oil. And if I didn't mention it, the vegetable oil that went into this dough was sunflower oil, and that is what I've just sprayed in my bowl as well. You can see the dough; it's not sticking to my hands. It's really nice. It's moist. It's supple. And when I poke it a little, it gives a little. So and it springs back. Plop it down in there. We're gonna stick a bonnet on it. I'm gonna spray it here. And we're gonna let this just hang out and rise. It could take up to two hours for this to double. And we'll be back when it's time to pan this up and let it rise a second time. Okay, we're back. Boy, did we have an afternoon. We steam cleaned some carpet. We did our afternoon roundup. There's a link for that too. Oh my gosh, we had so much to do. So. This has risen for a little more than, you know, what I like to let it rise, but on this first rise, you can get away with letting it rise a little bit too long. On the second rise, you can never get away with letting it rise too long. And the reason being is that too much air builds up in there and the yeast actually peters out. So what you really need to be careful of is that if you're gonna be away from it, make sure it's during your first rise, not your second. So we're going to deflate this. We're just going to deflate it. We're not going to punch it or abuse the dough. Didn't do anything to you. I always say that. Mm -hmm. This recipe makes two loaves. So we're going to divide this in half the best that we can. One always comes out bigger than the other. So, you know, ladies, what I'm talking about, there's always one that's bigger. All right. So what I like to do is just like we form our other loaves of bread. And sometimes with this heavier dough, I will get out my rolling pin just because I like to get it really even. But I think we'll be all right. I'm gonna roll it up really, really tight And you're going to pinch it closed on the bottom. Just like that, the best you can. Then we're going to take the ends, I'm going to press them into themselves, and I'm going to pinch them closed. Again, we're going to pinch it into itself and kind of bring the top over and pinch it closed. And this is where you can even out your roll. Smooth it out. And then, whoopsie, we're going to spray a pan with some vegetable oil. Of 
put it in and press it in there really well. I know this seems like overkill, but this is going to help your bread know where it's supposed to go. Okay, spray it again. And this is just so it doesn't stick to the bonnet. Cover it. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees. And while it's preheating, I'm just gonna put my bread on top of the oven, on top of the stove. The warmth from the stove is going to encourage the rise. Do not rise this for longer than 45 minutes. It should be slightly domed and come up just above the edge of the pan. When it's time to put this in the oven, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, we are ready to put this in the oven. It has been just about 45 minutes and we're gonna pop this in. One thing I will say is that the wheat bread dough is a lot more forgiving than the white bread dough. If that were white bread dough, forget it. I would have had to toss it and start over. So we're gonna bake this for 30 minutes at 350 degrees and when it's ready to come out, we'll be back and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay. These are ready to come out of the oven and they look great. Now remember, wheat bread's gonna look a little bit darker than white bread when it comes out of the oven, but it is perfect. And before I go any further, I wanted to say thank you to Tina Burnham. She um, sent me these as well as a quilted bag that um, is currently in the some laundry. Coasters. And she sent me some coasters, which I love. Um, these are great and I'll leave a, a link to her Facebook page she does these to order and she does a really nice job and I just wanted to say thank you to her for sending them to me. I have been using them and they're really lovely. So um, the coasters look just like this and uh, sometime I'll show you the bag. It's, it's in the wash right now because I have been using it and I really like it. So let's take these loaves of bread out. Of, they just should tip right out of the pan. Good. Famous last words, mm -hmm. right? And it did. Sometimes it needs a little coaxing. Especially when you put honey in uh, your bread dough, it does tend to want to stick just a little. And then it's nice and hollow sounding. And then I'm going to butter the tops. This is completely optional. You don't have to, but I do find that buttering the tops keeps them nice and soft. And then I've had a lot of people ask me how I store my bread. Well, one of these loaves is going to, once it's completely cool, it's going to go in the freezer, wrapped up, because I won't need it this week, but I'll need it next week. And then the other loaf I'll leave out, and we will be using that. And I just slice it as I need it, and we use this for sandwiches. And we like this quite a bit. I have a loaf of this particular recipe, and I will show you what it looks like. Let me grab it and I'll meet you over at the counter. This is how I store my bread. I buy these bags at Walmart or anywhere else. They're called bread bags, okay? They're called bread storage bags and they don't have a zip top and they're just thin plastic. They come with twist ties. This is old school, folks, but I gotta tell you, they really work. And the reason they work is because they're longer. They accommodate a whole loaf of bread and with enough at the end to twist tie it together. So this is what the bread looks like when it's completely cooled. This particular loaf has previously been frozen and then thawed out, but it's still really nice. It's nice and soft and we like it. I'm gonna slice you off a piece just so you can see. It slices up really, really well. And you can slice it very evenly. I slice my bread between a quarter and a half inch thick because that's where my family likes it. And Rick always shakes his head. He says, I don't know how you do that. And then slice them as evenly as possible. But um, you can see this doesn't have hemp seed in it. This just has uh, flax seed in it. And it's really nice. It's soft. It's delicious. And my family really enjoys it. So that is how you make yourself some delicious light honey wheat bread with flax seed and hemp seed you can put whatever kind of seeds you want in there so i hope you try it i hope you love it and until next time i'll see ya
Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you like what you watched today, and I hope that you try it, and I hope that you love it. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and Google Plus and Blogger. I have a blog over there and you can take a look at that. You can um, subscribe to that feed as well. And don't forget that every recipe that you see me um, do here on YouTube, with the exception of a few earlier ones, you can access all of the recipes over on my website, NareensKitchen.com, where you will find printer-friendly versions of those recipes so you can print them out and keep them for your own. So, I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!